In today's topic, we're going to be discussing the idea of a piecewise function. So, what is a piecewise function? Well, first of all, let me just remind you what a regular function would be like. A regular function would be f of x equals something. So I'll just say y. So some function of x, if you give me an x, plug it in, I'll spit out an answer. And we can graph these sorts of things. Maybe my function looks something like this. And so while I may not know what function this is, you can look at it and see it's what we call continuous. That is that you can follow it along. It's nice and smooth, right? There's no jagged changes in behavior, and everything sort of flows along nicely. So this is a continuous function, meaning that all you have to do is just tell me what the formula is, and I can just throw in numbers and graph it. Now, a piecewise function is something that cannot be described so simply. So let me first show you the graph of such a thing. Here's what a graph of a piecewise function might look like. Perhaps something like this. Now, perhaps intuitively you can see that there's not going to be one nice y equals f of x that I can use that's going to really easily tell me how to graph this. It's, it's all erratic. It goes like this, and then goes down, and then goes straight again, and then it starts to curve up. So I'd have to use pieces in order to describe this, and I'd have to give you restricted areas over which I would use those pieces. So if I label stuff, perhaps I'll just call this location A, location B on the x-axis, location C, location D, and location E. So I'm just giving you the points on the x-axis where these things start and end. Now, if we look at this, this cuts this up into four different sections. We've got this section right here, and I'm going to call this F1. We've got another section right here. Let's call that F2. We've got a third one right here. Let's call that F3. And then I've got this one over here. I'll just keep it the same color it was, and I'll call it F4. And so now I want to describe this. Well, what I can do is I can say my overall function f of x is equal to, and you'll see these big curly braces. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put everything you need to know in here in order to graph this. So the order that I list these things, usually it wouldn't matter that much. But by convention, we just go left to right. So I'm going to list my first constraints left to right, then everything in the middle, and then end with my furthest thing over. So if I look at the left, this is some constant function. So I'm actually going to need to give values for that as well. So actually, I'm, go I'm going to use my f1s. So if this right here, this is function f1. But then we say, comma, where do I use function f1? Well, you use it when x is greater than or equal to a and when it's less than or equal to b. OK. Then, when we're not in this area anymore, now we're using function f2. And when do we use it? Well, we use it when x is greater than b, but less than or equal to c. Notice that if I used an equal to on my previous function, so in other words, b maps to f1, then that means f2 cannot map to that point. So in this case, since it overlaps, it doesn't matter which function I say maps on this point. But if they were broken apart, like say I had f1 was all the way up here instead, then I'd have to choose. Either f1 gets to fill this in, or f2 would get to fill it in. And that'll either be provided, or it'll be kind of arbitrary which way you choose to do that. Then we have f3. <clears throat> and that's in between c and d. And finally, we have f4. 
and that's in between D and E. So just looking at this, F1 is some number. So perhaps Y, that could be like 1 or 2. So it's just saying whenever X is between A and B, just put the number 1 or 2, whatever it is that's right here. Just put that number there. Whenever X is between B and C, this looks like it would be something like Y equals negative X. So use that to graph, but only do it in here. And then between C and D, it looks like we've got a num another number, maybe Y equals negative 1. So for all the x's in between there, just plot y equals negative 1. Do, 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 do. And then here, this is probably some sort of form of x squared, like maybe x minus d squared or something like that. So for in between d and e, plug numbers into that function. So the idea of a piecewise function is just that. It's just that you're going to cut up the x-axis, and you're just going to say, in between here, graph this function. In between here, graph this function. In between here, graph this one. And in between here, graph that one. So it it's, uh, takes some getting used to because it's a little strange to see a whole bunch of different functions here. But it always goes that they give you the function, and then you just look, where am I drawing this? I'm only going to draw this here. So all of these could extend. right? If I just graphed f of 1, it would just keep going across. If I just graphed f of 2, I'd keep having a line like this. If I just graphed f of 3, it would keep going like this. And if I just graphed f4, it would continue to be a parabola like that. But we're not doing that because we're cutting these and pasting them just in those sections. So that's the idea of a piecewise function. And that is today's topic video.